Hello, it's Jang here with a look at the Fortrex, the big rolling castle or mobile headquarters of Nexo Knights. Now this really is supposed to be exactly what it looks like, a castle on tank treads. And it does actually roll, and it rolls a lot better than it would have a single season ago because they now have these little tire inserts. They fit into a Technic pin-sized hole, which goes great with that tread, and they are made of rubber, so they give you extra traction. But this is much more than just a building on wheels. It can actually open up and partially transform. You completely open all this up. You can open up with a little desk there, switching around to the front. There's actually a little knob off to the side, which allows you to bring down the drawbridge, which at the same time deploys a vehicle and brings up this turret up here, which is also removable. The little wheeled vehicle is a night cycle and you can bring the sides of it up to kind of close that in. It currently has clay in there with his shield attached to the front. It's basically just a low profile motorcycle, but it's nice and fits in with the scheme of the whole thing really well and rolls and you kind of turn it side to side. This thing up top is called the Aero Striker V1. It comes straight off and the sides of it are supposed to be wings. It's supposed to be a kind of a crossbow inspired flyer. It has a huge cannon that's built into it so you can really rain down some massive firepower. This thing shoots out quite a large projectile. It can probably take down some fairly large things on the battlefield. So you can fly around with this with one of your knights. You can also just move it to a different mount on the front. So I'll bring the wings back in and mount it just a little bit further forward. And now it becomes just a stationary large cannon with just a little bit of range of motion. So you can kind of fire side to side, not up and down very much. Well, up, yes, but down, not so much. Eh, a little bit in the corners, I guess. The castle also has these six shooters up here, which just fire straight forward. The studs, it's also got the small stud shooters down here for point defense. Those are able to rotate around. You can also pick them up and just use them as minifig weapons. And each side of the castle has these dual laser cannons that can be rotated around. And those can be controlled from the inside where you just set up a figure right there and you can't actually physically shoot with this, but it's good for imaginative play. Now behind that on this side is a little training area so you get kind of a training dummy setup or a training bot and also a target. These are both removable elements so you can set them up to kind of expand things out. A small little bit of armory over here with an additional nice powered weapon. It shows that it's being powered up at that panel. And then on the other side, you've got your Nexo power selection board with chicken power and charging attack that are on the rack ready to use. And then this is the small little kitchen area, which is manned by Chef Eclair. And for some reason, they put the hot water on the right side here. This is actually an oven down below and it has a little leg of, of chicken or some sort of poultry in there. And it's also a, a glass and uh, Chef Eclair has a little pan. In the center of all this is the round table with Murloc 2.0 currently set up there. And this is a printed piece and this is also intended to be removable. This should actually separate out down here. This is actually the round table itself, which has a sticker on it in this case. And that just fits down below and you can actually intentionally rotate that around to be able to access different parts. It moves front and back to help you you may have seen that just very briefly to open up the chairs when you first open the whole thing up. You just move it front to back and it just kind of has a, a quick little motion there. And then this is a stand for Murloc 2.0. You can see exactly how it's printed or really painted with the, the kind of silver color that's added on there. Just very, very thin. You can actually turn these down for what? Well, to make it into a freestanding stand. Kind of turns them into feet so you can make this a separate element that doesn't have to be attached to the table. Upstairs, meanwhile, inside of one of the towers is a little targeting area, a little tech area. And on the other side is the small little prison or single jail cell of the Fortrex. And that can just be opened up from the side. It's supposed to be a, a tech panel and that's a printed piece right there. Fortrex also has a very small classic tool rack. And on either side is an ammo store where you can keep extra studs for your stud shooters. One more thing, when the drawbridge gate is closed, you can use this kind of hidden little disc launcher. There's a button on the back that you push right through and 
it shoots out these discs and they give you three of these. As far as proper builds for the bad guys in this set, you just get this one Fire Skeeto demonic flyer, which has a pretty cool looking face on the front of it. I appreciate the, the dark brown and the horn elements. It has a mouth that you can articulate just opening and closing it a little bit. But that is not a tongue in there, that center round red piece. That is a disc launcher. It actually has a disc launcher in all black here. I appreciate that compared to the couple of, of grays that they did before. It's launched kind of remotely from the tail. You just push this rod in and it fires off a goblin disc. Wow, that one is gone, but fortunately they do include a total of three in there and I can show you the two different types. So they have two different personalities for those things. On the left here is Clay with, I believe that's the Tech Caliber sword he's got. And for his Nexo power on his shield, he's set up currently with Hawk Holler. On the right is Aaron with his Blazer Bow, which is based around a new minifig accessory piece, which shoots out these interesting new bolts. So this is a shooting thing. Push on that and that gets shot out. Does not use studs. Instead, it uses this, just a very interesting new piece. Currently, uh, Aaron is set up with superhuman speed as his Nexo power. Take a look at the rest of what you see here. So uh, Aaron does get a couple of extra bolts on his back. And you could also see that as being a jetpack if you want to, but it's, it's really his quiver. With everything removed, you can see the prints on the torsos much more easily. Each figure gets a secondary face. And there's a clean look from the front with the prints that go all the way through from the torso down to the feet. And those have some nice metallic printing on them as well so you can see some of the, the shine. Here's big ol' Axel with his power axe and his currently equipped Nexo power is Ground Pound. This is a unique body for Axel. It actually has a minifig torso on the inside but that's fused in. You cannot remove that from the larger body piece that you see there. Also has a new type of arm, a large arm, which is not able to rotate at the elbows or at the wrist. You can't rotate the wrist around at all. You can just make this go forward and back. And that's actually just attached in there with a Technic sort of connection, just a, a pin. And with some of the stuff removed, you can get a clear look at his face from the front. You can see the prints on the torso, hips, and legs a little bit better. And there's his alternate face. Now here on the left is an Ash Attacker with his Magma Blade there, followed by two different types or different prints of Scurriers. And over on the right is Chef Eclair, and he has a printed one by one tile piece for his front. The Ash Attacker does have an alternate face on the back, and he also gets some print there. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at the, or clearer look at just his face print on the front. The set also comes with a single Book of Evil with the printed transparent purple cover on it. And that's also a print in there giving you a little preview of what monster will come from this book. All told, I feel like this is a super fun playset, a real proper playset that is designed first and foremost for play, play, and more play. So many things that can be done with this thing. Just kind of going back to the, the kid that's still in me, I can just... I can just feel all the possibilities and all the excitement and just the hours of, of time that I could put into this as a child to just come up with different scenarios and things that could be done here and connecting any kind of scenarios with other sets or even making up, you know, small little bad guys. Obviously, kind of the, the bad guy side is is lacking here with just, you know, some, some small little kind of commodity units and the, with the one small flyer. But for what it is, for the focus on the good side headquarters, it, it really does its job fantastically well. I think better than pretty much any other headquarters set that, that LEGO has done for, for years, for many years. And I feel like I get a really good value for this. I feel like this is a really great gift for a lot of kids. I really feel genuinely happy for kids who are going to be able to receive this thing. It's definitely not in any way, even slightly, a substitute for a classic castle, for a vintage collector or anything like that. It's not even trying to be. It doesn't pretend to be. It just has medieval based or derived styling for the whole theme. For what this is supposed to be though, a big original play set, I think it's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching this video and please do share what you think about the Fortrex by leaving a comment on the video. Talk to you again soon.